Yes, it's me again. After a very extended absence, uh, I'm back here with another video. This one here is dedicated to Ten Dollar Slimer, a channel I've just discovered and who I recommend all of you to check out because uh, they're hilarious. So today, what I'm going to do is uh, go through every single adaptation of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World that's ever been made and give like a quick 30 second review of each for your viewing pleasure. So I hope the guys over there at Ten Dollar Slimer are, are watching this. If so, I thank you very much. I read the comment you left on my earphone fail video and uh, yeah, the wind guards are a temperate lot. So. Let's get into it right here. So first off, we have the uh, the original novel by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in a very nice uh, vintage cover there. It's one of the best books I ever read. If you ever get a chance, I suggest you read it. Uh, you will not be disappointed. It was an inspiration for Jurassic Park and Land of Time Forgot and a whole bunch of other things. Now, the first uh, film adaptation was this one. Uh, the Lost World in 1925, which was a silent film, actually, um, directed by, I believe, Harry O. Hoyt, uh, if I, yeah, Harry O. Hoyt, um, and uh, the stop-motion effects in this one uh, were done by Willis O'Brien, evidently eight years before he would get to work on Marion Cooper's film King Kong. Uh, and uh, you can see there, there's a quote by Stan Winston, may he rest in peace. Uh, oh god, I can't even focus the, the freaking thing. Well, basically the quote says that uh, the, the dinosaurs in this film went on to inspire the designs for Jurassic Park. So, that's pretty neat. This film was okay, honestly. I mean, it was not too faithful to the book. And you can see on the cover, it, there's two carnivores, the uh, Allosaur and what looks to be a Baryonyx, uh, tramping about London. Um, that's, that's seen at the end of the film, but the, the, there is no uh, carnivores whatsoever. In the book, uh, they brought back a Pterodactylus, uh, whereas in the film, they brought back a Brontosaurus or a Patosaurus or whatever. And it was just stumbling about and such, and there was a forced love triangle in there too, which was pretty campy. But uh, see this if you can, I suppose. Okay, this one. Uh, this is a. Uh, it's called Lost Continent. Uh, it stars Cesar Romero as the Joker, or not as the Joker, <laughs> but who played the Joker in this. This is an unofficial adaptation of. Uh, the Lost World. Essentially, um, it follows the same uh, premise, but I guess it has somewhere other to do with nuclear development in the 50s, because this came out in 1956. Uh, I believe, it doesn't say it on here anywhere, but I believe it came out in, oh, 51. Yeah, 51. Uh, this film was alright. It was actually not that great. Uh, it's black and white, as is that, uh, but the plateau sequences were tinted green, I suppose, uh, just to give them a more realistic, primordial feel, when they didn't really look all that great. And the only dinosaurs in there really were this Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, whatever you want to call it, and those Triceratops, which was lame. And there was like a com superimposed chameleon or something in there, but uh, it's that. Okay, this one here, The Lost World uh, by Irwin Allen. This is uh, uh, from the 1960s, from 1960 actually, and uh, this stars Claude Rains, who, who had fame from The Invisible Man, and uh, Basically, it follows the exact same plot, except this time, instead of in Brazil, where the plateau uh, full of dinosaurs was said originally to be placed in, 
Uh, it's in Venezuela for some reason. It affects no part of the story whatsoever, but it's in Venezuela <laughs> for some reason. But uh, it's interesting in that... Uh, have a look at uh, those creatures there. Uh, you know, that crocodilian and that... Co that uh, Komodo dragon there with horns on them and Willis O'Brien was originally said to have a hand in the effects work of this film uh, but uh, the director Irwin Allen apparently uh, Willis O'Brien was going to implement rudimentary stop motion into this, but Irwin Allen thought that it would be too expensive and decided to get a whole bunch of reptiles <laughs> and just tape, like, uh, uh, horns and stuff on them, and it looked really, really rubbish, to tell you the truth. And, uh, it wasn't that great. It's not good as, uh, Goon Tick or... Yaguntik Cthulhu says on Ten Dollar Slimer. It wasn't good, no. But I guess it's fine. It didn't really follow the book all that well, either. Now this one, this one's a double feature, actually. Uh, it says The Lost World there. Um, this includes both films from 1992. Uh, the Lost World and Return to the Lost World, its sequel. Uh, this film, or these two films, both star John Rhys Davies from Lord of the Rings fame. And uh, this was actually a Christ uh, Christmas or birthday present from a friend of mine who's no longer a friend anymore, which is sad, but I got this. Uh, and basically, uh, it's pretty faithful, except that uh, the plateau is in Africa for some reason, but, uh, you know, um, it, it was, it was actually pretty good, uh, from what I remember, the first one at least, uh, and there was some nice puppetry in there as well, uh, I forgot to mention that Lost Continent also implemented stop motion, which was not as good as the, as the original Lost World, but you know, that's there, but yeah, uh, basically, a bunch of hand puppets as dinosaurs, but you know it was okay. And then that's a return to Lost World standalone edition. Uh, basically, uh, um, they return <laughs> to the Lost World, and uh, there's this other party who's who's led by that person there, um, mining for oil on the plateau and they gotta go and save it and such and uh, whole environmental type of affair. It was all right, it wasn't that good. Okay, this one, uh, the reason why I had this here, this is a Lost World Dress Park, uh, is because, oh man, it's a bit dusty there, uh, is because uh, the original novel by Michael Crichton, The Lost World, was inspired by Conan Doyle's uh, book, and has quite a few references to it in there, if you do not know. And uh, I may make a video about the references eventually, but we'll see. Uh, everybody knows this film, I'm sure, uh, but uh, I just decided to include it in there because, you know, it's Lost World related, and uh, that's, uh, that's it for that. Oh, God. This little tidbit here. I had ordered this from Indonesia a couple years ago, and I had uh, waited like maybe two months for it to arrive, and then it arrived maybe a, a year or so later, and uh, I was so excited to watch it. it stars Patrick Bergen. Uh, I don't know who but it, that is. But it also stars Michael Sinelkoff, uh, or Silenkoff, I don't know how to say his name, from the TV series, um, as Sam Ali. Uh, 
as I said, I saw this, hoping it for it to be great, but uh, it's not good. It really is not that. It is. It's actually pretty horrible. Uh, in no in no way does it follow the book. It takes place in Mongolia. <laughs> for some reason, they just can't stick this plateau in South America. Uh, it must be in Africa or in Mongolia or somewhere other. But uh, the effects in this are horrid. It's almost like a sci-fi channel film, you can see there. Um, and they even get names wrong for dinosaurs. There's a brac there's they say they see a brachiosaur, which is that right there. But it's got a spiky tail and doesn't have any prominent nose features on its noggin. So I have no idea what the hell that is. They say that the S Roxton, who's American for some reason, because all the other characters are English, including him, but they made him American for some whatever <laughs> invariable reason. Uh, he picks up a, an Ankylosaurus uh, baby and then says it's a Centrosaurus, which is obviously a Ceratopsian. That's wrong. And the Tyrannosaurus, there's Tyrannosaurus in here, has long-ass arms, like a raptor or something, which you can see the cover there. That's meant to be an Allosaur or a Megalosaur or whatever it is that's in the book. Uh, but uh, And uh, basically it's also a kind of a horror film too. So people die in very grotesque ways and such. And this was filmed in Canada, so you know it was cheap and that it's probably going to be bad. I'd not recommend this. I would not. I just, it wasn't even worth however much I paid for it, much less the weight. So we move all those uh, <laughs> mediocre adaptations out of the way and get to this one. This is actually one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, this is the BBC uh, miniseries, or television movie, whatever you want to call it, of The Lost World. Starring Bob Hoskins, uh, James Fox, Matthew Reese, Tom Ward, El Elaine Cassidy, and Peter Falk from uh, Colombo. Uh, this was filmed in New Zealand for some odd reason, uh, but uh, it works. It really does work. This is perhaps the most accurate adaptation there is. I really do recommend this film. Uh, the effects in it are wonderful. Uh, it's basically a mix, like Jurassic Park, it's a mix between CGI and uh, practical animatronics and such. And there's a lot of really good character drama in there. And uh, even though there's no women in the book, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it worked out pretty well, in my opinion. And uh, the ape suits, because there's ape men as well, I forgot to mention that. The ape suits look really good. Uh, as I said, the effects are great. And it follows the story pretty freaking well. Uh, actually, and I just forgot what the hell I was saying. Oh dear, I just lost my train of thought. Damn it. But, uh, it's made in 2001. The score to this, the film score, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, I'll try and see if I can put a link to the channel name, uh, in the description where he uploads the score of this film. It is absolutely first rate. And uh, great listening. Take some influence from Jurassic Park, kind of. But uh, I really do recommend this film. Uh, I know each review is longer than 30 seconds, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. So those are all the adaptations of Arthur Conan Doyle's, what I think to be his best book. Uh, He's mostly known for Sherlock Holmes, uh, and that's really about it. But uh, he's also known for this, The Lost World. I don't know if any of you have read it out there. Let us let me know if you have, and uh, perhaps post a response video or something, uh, just so I could see a review or something. I've only seen really like one review of it, 
uh, on the whole of YouTube, and that's pretty disappointing. I ought to put a review up of this, because I reread this, actually, because it's pretty good. But, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, that's uh, about it. So, thank you once again to $10 Slimer for commenting and such, and uh, let's hope that maybe... Uh, we can become very good friends, and thanks also to subscribing to my channel, I noticed, because uh, this thing only has two subscribers, and now there's three, which I assume is the people at $10 Slimer. So, thank you very much, and uh, I should be going now.